We are starting the recording. There we go. So, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is is the um, this 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 whole history of Osetru, of Norse paganism, of heathenry, of Wicca, of all of these um, really fairly radical ideas. You've kind of been around since the beginning of it. As a as a real pioneer, I want to say. Thank you. There have, and especially with regards to the idea of a woman in it. Um, even when I got into this a little over a decade ago, there was it was still a lot of men sitting around wearing a flat cap, smoking a pipe, talking about some book they've read, right? Yeah. You've but in this time, I'm beginning to see more and more women step into a role we're still trying to identify. And yet you did that years ago in 1983. What, um, I mean, I almost want to ask what brought you to that point, but you oh, were so, yeah, go ahead. It was well done. Yes. I was working in a Vita format. And what happened was I already was introduced to the rooms and started doing rooms and then I just wanted to work with my own God because I couldn't connect with the Greek God or the Celtic gods they were working with. Right. So I wanted Wodan, Dona and Freya. And it's only later I find out that these are the Scandinavian and Anglo-Saxon gods as well. And by that time, I really got going. Because I, the blood kicked in, the blood memory. The, if you read my book, there aren't many books I draw from. The whole thing comes out of my blood memory from my DNA. And I was looking at that today on... on um even on Amazon, that Northern Mysteries and Magic, that thing is really and truly a classic uh, with regards to people trying to make that connection um, with that blood memory. Um, I, I've heard people talk about that now, but when you jumped into that, the runes seem to have captured your imagination the most. Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, <laughs> totally, totally, always runes and holding. Bodom, everywhere. Oh, yes. I was like a teenager in love with Elvis. Pictures everywhere. Love letters on ash trees. You know, the silly little things normal kids do if they get the opportunity. Right. With the course, I didn't. I was locked up in the test system. <laughs> right. So so I, I, was like, I was like a 12 year old. I mean, looking back at it now, I must have made an utter act of myself so many times. But who I gave I know I have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was the road. It was just rushing through me 24-7. And yes, it did burn me out. Did it? Yeah. But I'm back now. You feeling good? You know, I saw, I saw that you're doing the rune readings. I saw you. I saw you doing rune readings again, um, and yeah. I've heard a couple people say already that they're phenomenal. That they're really, really incredible. So that yeah. that means something. When you, um, what's your take on the on the emergence of these very polarizing ideas in heathenry? I mean, it seems like the more radical a person's position is. Other people are saying, well, that's the quality of his heathenry. He's a little bit better because he's more radical. And yet, every day I see you do some kind of common sense approach to it. I mean, you say you, you were like a, a, a fan of Elvis, but but these days I see you get out there and, and just bottom line it. This is stupid. You know, let's find a common middle ground here. Is, yes. is that just... It's got to be transcended. This is 
this polarization is happening everywhere. It's happening in Wicca, it's happening in conventional lodges, it's happening in the OTO. It's something that is now has taken on a force of its own. And it keeps polarizing because it is in the interest of a certain egregore to keep the people divided. But within hedonry, I have done two book reviews. One book review by a woman called Ingrid Kintate, and she is as universalist as they come. Right. So that book is totally transcendent, straight from the well, obviously supported by the Vanir. Then I done an interview on Anders Nielsen's book. Yes. It comes out of the same well with a different guide, more Aesirid than Vanik. But still, and this proves to me that the gods don't give a fuck. They support anyone who wants to bring out good, workable material that makes the person into a better person. And in both Ingrid Kincaid and Nelson Anderson do this. So there is a third way. There is a third way. I am so glad to hear you say that. I have said that. You got me excited there, Freya, because that, that really means something to me. When you see all of these people in the street screaming and hollering, emitting all this energy, where's that energy going? What's feeding off of that energy? What's it doing? Yeah. Something is making use of all that energy. And oh, when I see, yeah, exactly. It is distracting us to the left or to the right of our ability to go forward. And, I, and I've said this, and I... They, they, they've taken shots at me too for the same reason because I, it's the flip side of the same coin and neither side moves us forward to join the mission on their gods, whatever that might be. Yeah, well, they forget about the gods and get bogged down into politics. Yeah. Never and that's it. But it is the same force what has hijacked Vika, what has hijacked the gay liberation movement of the 70s, what has hijacked honest feminism, the right of the same salary from the 70s, and it's all been hijacked and into the wrong direction, too much into the extreme. So then it invokes an equal and opposite reaction from the people who already would have resisted those changes in the 70s. If you look through history, every time you see the gods become involved in the affairs of men, things go south pretty quick because that's men can't why, handle it. That's why they should get involved more with women. I agree. Fuck you. I, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, you bastard. <laughs> I uh I do a I do a Gothi call every Sunday morning and I have a, a female Githia on there for that very reason. I'll be sitting there talking, thinking I'm doing good, I've got this figured out, man, we're gonna move forward. And she'll come in and she'll say something about weaving that's I would have never thought about. And yet it's completely relevant to the discussion. And it's vital to the discussion. Um, it's very difficult being in some of the positions we're in to say these things without someone wanting to categorize you. Oh, he's a feminist. Well, from the time you're born until the time you die, there's a woman involved in the development of that man. That's and it's a woman that gives Sigurd a drink of the memory drop. It's a woman that gives Odin that drink of the mead of inspiration. And, it, and we and we I think we do ourselves a disservice by not paying attention to that. And I and you have, I mean, when we talked in our our message the other day in '83, you were in the Odinic, right? You were the only woman in there, right? Yes. Yes. And yet it hasn't stopped you from being brave enough to stand up and say exactly the things you just said for decades now. Well. There was no problem. I've, I've always been treated with the utmost respect 
even to the extent they walked me back to the tube station. I was the only woman, but they were quite protective. They were a good crowd. I think that's something we've lost. I, I really do. I was talking with that's Valerie. I, I, Valerie Wright was talking. She said something to me not long ago. She said that she sees heathenry eating itself because there's a loss of that kind of of honoring a woman. Of you know, if you're the only woman in there and they took good care of you, that's a that's an important thing. And I and I, I'm I think in some areas we're beginning to see that responsibility because that's kind of a scary thing for a man to do to take responsibility for the well-being of someone that's so vitally important to him there's a there's a there's a responsibility there that i think some men are afraid to take honestly but i also see women not certain of the role they should be taking well Mm. what do you think about that I think it's all fucked up. The whole family structures are fucked up. Fits are, um, well, we all know what goes on. Right. And, uh, it, you know, putting them on, on hormones, puberty blockers, and elderly people. You know, we as a folk, we are losing the contact with our bloodline because we don't take care of our elderly and our kids. And these are the both ends of the spectrum where the bloodline goes. We fuck our kids' heads up with pills, with operations, with fuck no fuck, and the elderly are just bunked in a home. I live in Spain. There's a whole street there, three, four houses there, and behind me another load of four, five houses, they're all occupied by four, three, four, five generation families looking after themselves. They are still folkies. Yes. All, yeah, all right, they're dead folkies. They won't employ you as if you're English, but that is different. But <laughs> do you get my drift? I do get your drift. I know exactly what you're talking about. I wrote a, I wrote a book called Life and the Love of Life, Leaf and Leithers here. And I put forth the idea, if you look at the world wars, if you look at the flu of 1918 that got the elderly and the sick, if you look at um, the, the, the communist manifestos that killed hundreds of million people, they got the young and they got the old. Yeah. And all we were left with are the runes, that great message through time that allows us to grow, to reawaken that folk soul. And then the nuclear family comes along. Well, you need to grow up and get out of the world and go to college. And then their their kids live in New York City and they're still at home down on the farm. And there's we're losing something very important there. And I'm I'm glad to hear you say that when we when we attack the young with 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 social ills, literally, and then we we disregard the elderly. Listen, if you look back in history, ten thousand years ago, there was an elder sitting around a fire in the middle of winter. Telling these children, oh. telling these children these ancient tales. Listen, to- I get occasionally a bad connection. So oh, the major, yeah. that is it, just my internet, yeah? It's okay. We're, uh, every, everything you're saying, people you are going to listen to. It'll be yeah. all right. It'll be all right. Okay. But, I, okay. but I think that's, I think you're... The things you're saying. Yeah, I, I grew up yeah. outside the family structure. Right. They said I grew up in care home. So I have a total different look at this. A, I don't take I don't take it for granted because I never had it and I never missed it to be honest. But I can see the devastation to our people because like them or lump them. But other cultures, they still look after the elderly. You don't find Asian or black people sleeping rough in London. Yep, you're right. It's old people. And this is something that is very high of my agenda. And not just because I am 17 myself. I said similar things in 1993. 
on a television program called Desperately Seeking, the video whereof is on my website. What is your website? Um, Aswin.com. That's it. All right, good. We'll make we'll make sure we put that in there. I want to see that. I want to watch that video. Oh um, yeah, there's also videos there. <laughs> good, good. Aswin.com. Aswin double N dot com. Yeah. Is that where people can go to get your rune readings? Yes, that's where they can buy rune readings and they can buy lessons for the correspondence course. And okay. I'm also experimenting. Tomorrow I'm going to have a student, a Bolivian girl who lives in the States, and um, she wants to be taught face to face. Really? So, Instead of selling her a lesson, I'm selling her an hour of my time for the right. same $25. Right. And during that time, I teach her like I'm talking to you now, so I will be talking to her tomorrow. Because that... some people don't like reading shit. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> I've written yeah, maybe, Or maybe her English is, is not. I don't know, you know, but this is an experiment. I now can offer tuition, life tuition as well, which of course is good because if people ask the right question, I go off on a tangent and I get a whole stream of information straightly downloaded, which of course is not the case if you work with emails on the lesson. Right, right. It's oh, I agree. Working, but yeah, I'm also kind of reactivate my old YouTube channel, Woden's Maiden. I'm going to do experiment recording myself talking about rooms and things I like, and I think then that's good. to my YouTube. You are almost single handedly in the community that you're in, because you're really at the center of so many different communities. You have really a diverse following. I, you know, I, so I was more or less an outcast after the throat struck me out for yeah. about uh, three to thousand Muslims, basically. Man, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, I've been thrown out. And of course, it's a shitstorm. It was heavily opposed by lots of the membership. Oh, I'm sure it was. I have yeah. no doubt about it. And it was opposed by a lot of other people, too, who saw you as being in the troth, as giving it the legitimacy that it so desperately wanted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I did for the OR. Right. Right. When I yeah. wrote my first book, I put their address in it. And someone, Ingvar Ralph Harrison, Help me with the English, so he got a mention. And because of that, they got so many new members signing up. But that was in 19, uh, that was in 1988. I was also putting out an album and uh, T-shirts with, you know, an old oh, yeah. picture and in rooms, you know, in in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man. King is king. Oh, you know, it. <laughs> like that. oh, I have done so lot. I can't even remember. You know, be, you know, but all that effort has given people almost permission to do those kinds of things, to express themselves. And, yes. I, and, and you know, 20 years ago here in Oklahoma, if 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 someone had said that my father was following this path, well, the Department of Human Services would be there inspecting the home to see that the child was being raised properly. Yeah, well, now we have, awesome. yeah, now we have permission to do these things. Yeah, I, I you know, it's, I think it's a wonderful thing. Do you think all of a the sudden these pagan ideologies have now become kind of the hallmark of conservative ideas? All of a sudden, we're the ones talking about maintaining the family structure. All of a well, sudden, we're the ones. Yeah. Well, we're not the only one. 
you know. Well, we're not the only ones, but by but by and large, it's 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 becoming uh it's becoming more and more apparent that we stand for those kinds of very simple ideas of just loving yeah, our family. Yeah, but we are the ones who got most to lose. <laughs> you know, that's true, too. We are the ones that have the most to lose. That's the reason. I, I guess so. You know, there's... Uh, in Anders' book, do you... You say that it comes from the same well as Ingrid's book? Because I want to read it. Now that you've mentioned Ingrid's book, I want to find it and I want to read it. And what was the yeah. name of her book again? I, I can't remember. Okay. But her name was Ingrid what? Ingrid Kincaid. Ingrid Kincaid. I'll check that out. Look, I want to. Uh, the books are in no way compatible. They are at the opposing ends of the spectrum. Right. But. They unify and transcend both into something else. If only more people had the courage to accept that kind of idea. And I think it's going to be people of courage that can read both of those books and find that third way that you're talking about that are going to keep this thing alive. I yeah. don't think... I think every time we grab a hold of those radical ideas, we allow society to put us in a neat little box and ignore us. <laughs> yeah, I, they try to put me in a box all my life. The boxes I have been labeled with anything from subnormal to complete clinically insane to uh, lesbian to uh, somebody from Transylvania. To being white South African, oh, I've had so much shit. But nobody, I am what I am, and I don't compromise. I don't hurt anyone, but I don't compromise for anyone either. And I certainly will not be dictated to by either side who I have on my friends list. I agree with That's you right. there. That was my argument with the throat. Mainly a few memes and who I had on my friend list, and then people who I have, have me on their friend list, they're getting hassle as well. And one lady lost the cons lost her, uh, revenue on a business, so I defended her because she was losing money by being friends with me. Now that's the left for you. That is the left. I mean, our people don't do that. Shouldn't. You know? No. Our people don't do that. They shouldn't do that. No, I don't think. You know, it, it's all... Uh, the most important thing is to be open-minded and be able to see the value of both and the hopeful end result. I mean, it's all about the gods. We focus on the gods. We build up the Ecuador, and it don't matter which organization you're a member of or where you've been born. It is the intent feeding the Ecuador by talking about the God, bloating to the God, arguing with the God, cursing them out if you like, but keep that stream going. Where are they are sitting together bitching about Freya's when who's got a Nazi friend on the blah, 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 blah. They don't spend the energy on the God. They don't get the result, and our agriculture is going to be fucking bigger, is it? I agree. I agree. I, but, I, I th Go ahead. Because all this politicking is a distraction. Sure, you defend yourself if you're challenged, but you don't go around challenging people on the, on, you know, for instance, Trump. All this agro and all this polarization started mainly because of Trump. But the fact of the matter is the man couldn't possibly be longer in power than eight years, right? And people are shredding lifelong friendships and family members because of this for eight years, if he gets elected the second time. But look at all the interhuman, interrelational damage has been done because of this man. Not because it's not, I'm not saying it's his fault. 
he is only representing another current of the fight. He is larger than life itself. Of course, he's going to attract a lot of shit. Everybody does, whether it's Donald Trump or Alistair Crowley or Freya Aswin. It's all the same shite. Right. You put your head over the parapet, you're going to be shot at. <laughs> I love it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember that. I don't think there's going to be some people that listen to this that don't know what an egregor is. It's the group mind of people who follow the same spiritual ideology. Like the Roman Catholic Church is a massive big egregor. Right, right. Do you think um, these big industries form an egregor as well? Like pharmaceuticals, like the war industries? Do you think they... Uh, Yes, think? of course. Yes, of course they do. But their Ecuador is hasn't got any values. It's, it's just a, power and money gathering in one place. Totally damaging. In, that in itself is an Ecuador. Feel money, energy. Money translates immediately into power. Yes. I got money. I have I can decide who eats and who doesn't. As a simple example. He who controls the food supply controls it. has got the whole of humanity by the ball. And yeah. we all know, we all know who he is, is Bayo Monsanto. Yes, that yeah. is an extra goal. What generates it and what pets it, I don't know, but I do know that it goes back three second world war. That the same people are who invented Cyclone B are the same people who invented all that shit that Clive so paid. Yeah, the uh, non Hodgkin's lymphoma is becoming a real problem. It really is. Yeah. When these, when these ideologies that you and I subscribe to begin to emerge in the world, do you think they're a direct response to that very threat to human life? Well, so these these ideologies that we subscribe to, these beliefs, they have yes. emerged since about 1968, um, yes. maybe a little bit before that. Do you think they've emerged because of this very real threat to human life? All Partly. of these, huh? Partly, but it's also emerging because. People are no longer to take belief secondhand from a church. They want to think for themselves and they start looking at other things. It starts off with maybe reading the newspaper or the scope or go to a local yoga class and a little switch goes in their mind and they're on the spiritual path, be it Western mysteries, Vedka, Asatru or whatever. Yeah, the time is right, definitely. There has been a great change. I mean, I basically am a forerunner. I, wa I was ahead of my time. Oh, I agree. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah, I did this on my own. I did this all on my own. And I paid I the price for it. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Freya, I, I don't want to. I don't want to keep you very long, but man, the, what you've put out just in our little discussion is the kind of stuff that that needs to be heard. People need to hear it, and more importantly, women need to hear that they can say these things. Yeah, but and, I and, don't. Look, I have been at this for forty years. Oh, I know you. I, have. I must say honestly, I've got many male friends. And in every, or I have never, never felt, I have never been treated as less than simply because I'm a woman. Not in the OR, not in the trials, not in the AFA, not anywhere in the world. But then, you know, I'm not particularly feminine. I don't invite attention or competition okay. I'm just me I happen to my body happens to be female but 
anything else is just me, neutral. You know, I've got the male mind. Do you think that uh, the majority of these people coming in, do you think they believe in the divinity of these gods that we worship, that we that we hold as, as special and holy in our homes? Well, to be honest, a lot of the people who are, who get emotionally involved, yes, of course, but the people, the scholars, they will look at it perhaps more from the perspective of Jungian archetypes. Right. But as long it doesn't matter to the gods, the gods are archetypes as well as so it doesn't really matter on what level of understanding they approach the gods. The gods will lead them on themselves once the contact is made. Man, you're awesome. <laughs> I you see that's I think that's uh I think that's a surprising revelation for a lot of people. Because because you're right, the scholar will look at it from a perspective that he can understand it, but yes. he still he's still moving forward in accordance with what what needs to happen. Yeah, of That's course, of course, it is the left side and the right side of the brain, Jugend and Munin. Yep. Oh my gosh! Thank you for that. <laughs> well, I um. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop this and, and yeah, get this I recording all processed. I Man, I really appreciate your time, Fred. Thank you so much. And that's and you're at aswin.com, right? Aswin.com, yes. Okay. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I felt comfortable doing this now. I, I did, too. I, it blows me away. Thank you so much for your time. I'm really honored to talk to you. It was a such a marvelous pleasure on my part because... I know a bunch of people here, Donna and all these other people that, that know you, and they've always said wonderful things. So you, you're over there in a far continent, and you've become kind of this idea more than a person. And to talk to you was really special to me. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Talk to you okay. again. Right. You bet. Have a good day. Yeah. Bye. You too. Bye.